Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is March the 7th, 2020. Let's talk boxing. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, there are certain matchups every gambler wants to see in their head, right? They figure that, hey, if this happens, right, one of them in basketball are the Lakers against the Clippers in the Western Conference Finals for me, right? I think the Clippers take that. I think the power structure in Los Angeles changes. Well, getting back to boxing, there's certain boxing matches where I feel the underdog has a great chance, right? Longtime viewers here on YouTube know that I was looking forward years ago to Tyson Fury then taking on Vladimir Klitschko, who was the big bad wolf in the heavyweight division at the time. Well, right now, after looking at Anthony Joshua struggle the first fight against Andy Ruiz, when Ruiz got in the pocket and started flashing his hands. After looking at Anthony Joshua moving away from Andy Ruiz in the second fight, not wanting a pocket formed, right? Using his back foot more than he had in any of his professional fights to avoid a straight up shootout with Andy who simply didn't have the foot speed to force the formation of a pocket. Ever since the Andy Ruiz series of fights against Anthony Joshua, I have hoped and looked forward to a fight between Anthony Joshua, who still has belts, and Adam Konaki. Right? Let me just say this, or Konatsky. Let me just say this, uh, Konatsky has the foot speed that Andy Ruiz does not have. He has volume. He forces an opponent out of their comfort zone. He insists on an exchange round after round. One of the best fights of last year was Chris Ariola against Konatsky. That was a great fight. Konatsky dared Ariola to return fire, and Ariola did, right? Eventually, the younger man won that fight. But what I want people to understand is that Konatsky wants to fight the winner of Fury versus Wilder 2, right? Well, 3. He wants to fight the winner of the trilogy fight. I don't believe that's going to happen because the folklore out right now, the prevailing narrative, is that boxing has had a group of three heavyweights who have been vying for supremacy the last few years, right? The two men I mentioned, Fury and Wilder, and Anthony Joshua. And of course, I believe if Tyson Fury beats Deontay Wilder, I believe Fury then is going to pivot toward Anthony Joshua because I believe Fury is a guy who wakes up some days and questions whether he even wants to be a fighter. So he's in shape right now, right? There's a lot of emotional turmoil with Tyson Fury. He's the best, but he also has talked about leaving after two more fights. I believe he knows because to me, he's aware of fight styles. I believe he understands that Adam Konatsky is a very tough style even for him. Right? Why would he risk a fight against an easier fighter, Anthony Joshua, to fight this guy? Right? I believe this guy is tougher for Tyson Fury than Anthony Joshua. In other words, Anthony Joshua fights at a slower pace. We're in a flat-footed, lower-volume power era. 
right? Tyson Fury would have the pacing advantage on Anthony Joshua. He can fight faster than Anthony Joshua. He'd be able to move faster than Anthony Joshua. He'd be able to pop jabs, get out of the pocket, then decide when he wanted to re-enter the pocket. Right? Joshua is very similar to Vladimir Klitschko. Understand Tyson Fury, when he fought Klitschko, was able to put both hands behind his back at times. He knew Klitschko couldn't fight at his pace. He doesn't know that with this guy. Right? Let me also talk about a community that often is overlooked that really is a gold mine for promoters. Right? We've heard about different boxing communities. Right? The Mexican community comes out, supports their fighters. Right? Boxing is a meaningful part of Mexican culture. Mexican fans know the top fighters. If Canelo's in an arena and people see him, they'll come out for him. They'll pay for the pay-per-view. Well, there's a community like that in the tri-state area. Right? New York, New Jersey. Understand, very rich boxing community. Very rich. Just think about the heavyweight, since Kanachki is a heavyweight, out of the tri-state area in the last 30 years, right? Mike Tyson, Mitch Green, Riddick Bowe, Shannon Briggs. Understand today, in the tri-state area, Kanachki is not the only ranked contender. You had another one who had a title shot scheduled with Anthony Joshua. Big baby Gerald Miller, who blew it. Well, let me just say, um, the Polish community in the tri-state area, right? That New York City and surrounding areas, will include Newark, is huge. Understand, they've had guys who have challenged for the crown in the last 30 years. Guys who quite frankly should have won some fights. Andrew Galata. He fights Riddick Bowe. He's beating Riddick Bowe. Not once, but twice. Now Riddick Bowe was extremely talented. Combination puncher. Faster hands than Galata. Right? Galata needed to go to the body to slow down Riddick Bowe's hand speed. He went south of the body. Gets disqualified for low blows. It's so bad, Lou Duva at one point tells him in the rematch, don't throw shots to the body. Galata panics. Starts throwing low blows again. Gets disqualified. Well, understand, Galata was such a major contender that he then faced, in my opinion, one of the best heavyweights of the last 30 years. Right? There are two guys who I put on the same level as Tyson Fury. Understand, they have better resumes than Fury. Fury is trying to be the best heavyweight of his generation. These guys were. Right? Andrew Galata steps in the ring with Lennox Lewis. This is the 1990s. Lennox Lewis knew that Andrew Galata could not fight on his back foot. Galata did not make it out of the first round. So then you have a borderline Hall of Famer. I would put him in the hall. This guy was the light heavyweight champion. Understand. He then gains weight. There's a 25 pound weight difference between light heavyweight and cruiser. He then becomes the cruiserweight champion. He even beats Steve Cunningham who dropped Tyson Fury. He beats Steve Cunningham twice.
close fights could have been scored differently, but let's just say he's in and he's competitive against Steve Cunningham. So then the other great heavyweight of the last 30 years to me, the Klitschko who I felt was the better Klitschko brother, Vitaly Klitschko, decided that he was going to fight Tomas Ademic. Now, I want people to look closely at the Vitaly Klitschko resume. He fights Chris Ariola in Los Angeles. He fights Tomas Ademic in Poland. At the time, I believe Ademic has one loss to Chad Dawson. Right? To make a long story short, Ademic doesn't go the distance with Vitaly Klitschko. So the Polish community has had different cracks at the heavyweight title. They've patiently waited for the next guy who's credible, who would have a real shot on a legitimate champion, right? Understand, Galata had a crack on Riddick Bowe and Lennox Lewis. Tomas Ademic had a crack on Vitaly Klitschko. Right? None of those fights worked out. Well, now you have this guy, Adam Konatsky. I'm just telling you, I feel this guy very competitive against Anthony Joshua. Very competitive. I view this guy as a step up on Arthur Spielka. I think Deontay Wilder would have problems with this guy. He's front foot heavy. He throws a lot of volume. I'll agree. His hand speed isn't the fastest hand speed. But I want people to understand. And we're going to see this when Joe Joyce fights Daniel Dubois. We've seen this in George Foreman's career. If you know how to fight, you can move a little slower. Right? A guy with fast hands who knows how to fight against you might have an advantage. But most guys don't really know how to fight. You understand. So Konatsky, who's unbeaten? knows how to get in the pocket, knows how to force guys like Gerald Washington to overheat, knows how to force a Chris Algieri who came in in great shape. I'll give Algieri that. But he knew how to force Algieri to fight three minutes of every round. Right? A fighter who had a reputation for coming in out of shape for some fights. He throws volume. He has power. Now, know when to say when. The betting line here is accurate. Kanatsky is a big favorite. I expect him to win the fight. Right? I'm going to stay on the sidelines in terms of betting this fight. But understand, I'm expecting Kanatsky to win this fight by KO by stoppage. Let me also say this too. And I know at least one of the Cunningham Tomas Ademic fights took place in Newark. Right? If a champion wants to fill an arena, right? Madison Square Garden, for example. Barclays. Right? The tri-state area has boxing venues. Just have a champ like Anthony Joshua fight Konatsky in the tri-state area. Understand they know boxing in New York City. Right? This guy knows how to fight. Just think about the boxing culture of New York City. Right? And of surrounding areas. Shakur Stevenson's from Newark. Right? You've had guys like Paulie Malinaji, Zab Judah, Chris Algieri, out of that New York area, Danny Jacobs, 
Derevianchenko, who, in my opinion, beat Triple G his last fight. Isn't it interesting that after that last fight, Triple G, of course, is still angling for a fight with Canelo, has not given Derevianchenko a rematch. Right? Understand, boxing culture in New York City is thick. You can imagine the wars in the gym Kanatsky has had. Right? If a Anthony Joshua were to announce that he's fighting Adam Kanatsky, let's say the third fight for Fury Wilder ends in controversy. And then they want to do it again. Understand, if Wilder beats Fury in that third fight, I don't see how, but if he does, they would have a draw, then they would have one for Fury, one for Wilder. If those guys are unavailable for whatever reason, let's say the winner gets cut. Let's say Fury wins the third fight, but is bleeding like he was at the end of the Otto Wallen fight. If Anthony Joshua looks over at Usyk, who's dangerous, better boxer, quite frankly, than Anthony Joshua. Not a better puncher, but a better boxer than Anthony Joshua. Right? And if Joshua wants a payday, and if Joshua needs to exercise the ghost of having lost on American soil, right? If he were to fight this fighter, I'm just telling you, the pay-per-view numbers out of New York City would be Bonzo. There would not be an empty seat in the arena. Right? I view Adam Konotsky as the best heavyweight out of New York City. Let's flip it. Let's say Konotsky decides to go to London. Let's say Anthony Joshua says, hey, fight me in front of my fans. I'm British. Why would I give that up for a heavyweight fight? Right? You come fight me in front of my friends and family. Right? I'm just telling you, many people, as you can imagine, show up in London, see the cosmopolitan flavor, the energy of the city, and they're overwhelmed. A New York guy like this wouldn't be. Let's just say, too, that Joshua wouldn't have to look hard to find Konotsky, right? That's the one knock on Konotsky. He's so busy finding you that you know where he is. Joshua would have a firefight on his hands. Given that Joshua has the superior punching power, would he take that fight? So I want people to look at this heavyweight. Again, I believe he's the best heavyweight out of New York City. He's very good friends with Big Baby um, Miller. But I believe that Miller isn't as elusive as this guy is in terms of getting inside, throwing punches, and stuff like that. Right? Both guys have a very similar fight style. I believe this guy is the crisper puncher. Robert Hellenius is big and clunky and slow. He doesn't have a hand speed advantage on Konotsky. This is exactly the kind of heavyweight that Konotsky destroys. Hellenius went the distance against Dylan White. I do not expect him to go the distance against Adam Konotsky. I also want people here to just understand the sociological significance here. You have a Polish community. There are many excellent Polish fighters in different weight classes. At heavyweight, this is their guy right now. He's unbeaten. He's beaten some guys who have had shots at the heavyweight title. He's calling out the heavyweight champions. And I'm just telling you, he's guaranteed box office. Right? The Polish community came out for Tomas Demick against Steve Cunningham. Right? I'm just telling you, this guy, who's fought on the big stage in New York, 
right? This guy would pull a crowd. More importantly, he'd have a chance. I like Adam Konotsky here. I'm expecting a KO. I'm not betting on the fight. I think it's properly priced. But understand, I'm expecting a KO if Konotsky is who I think he is. He's going to get inside on Helenia so early that by the start of the fourth round, you heard me right, the fourth round, Hellenius is going to be spent. Right? Maybe he survives another couple rounds, but you're going to know that Konotsky is on top. Right? Don't be fooled by Konotsky's appearance. People seem to expect every fighter to look like a weightlifter. Right? I don't, I don't know what that's about because that's not the history of a heavyweight division. Right? Larry Holmes didn't look like Anthony Joshua. Holmes was a dominant heavyweight champion. Right? Understand, too, Konotsky's nickname is Babyface. Don't be fooled by his face. Boxing has a long history of guys who look friendly and amicable. Canelo, right now, right? Looks like the friendly neighbor you have in the ring. You don't want to mess with his punching power. You don't want to question his heart. This is a fighter to watch. The next wave of heavyweights is almost upon us, especially if Tyson Fury retires in two fights. Right? The focus needs to start to shift toward Konotsky, Dubois, younger guys, right? In fact, the guy Dubois is fighting, slips my name now, Joe, I forget his name, Andy Ruiz, right? That's where the focal point of the heavyweight division is going to be, in my opinion, if Tyson Fury leaves the stage, right? Usyk, Michael Hunter, Another guy who's uh, interesting. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.